Good morning, friends. Welcome to uh, Word of God OBE Journal 2017, where we explore the many possibilities of out of body travel and consciousness projection and come to understand ourselves as multi dimensional beings dipping our toes in the experiment known as incarnation. As uh, somebody once said and has repeated over and over again, we are not physical beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. And it's certainly easy to forget that as we uh, plow our way through each day and facing the usual uh, challenges and ups and downs and frustrations and well, all that other stuff, responsibilities, schedules, bill paying, citizenship. It does take up one's time, doesn't it? <clears throat> Reflecting on uh, Steve Jobs' uh, brief but uh, radiant contribution uh, previously, just uh, yesterday, I believe. Yesternight. night. <laughs> um, that are definitely souls like him who actively uh, contribute to the uh, progress, as some people would have it, progress of uh, the physical plane, the technological process, the, uh, the uh, machine-like progress. Uh, I guess the, uh, <laughs> the religions take care of our moral progress, don't they? And uh, um, while that's all well and good, and uh, no complaints from me on that, um, I just wanted to point out that some souls are very attuned to that, and that is fine. Whether they're working in uh, health situations, medical situations, technical, any problem-solving sort of situation, certain souls uh, do actively contribute to the, the progress of the planet, of that type of progress. But the rest of us shouldn't feel in any way guilty or that we ought to do that. At least I don't believe we should. Um, just to uh, be here experiencing the uh, current level of evolution on the planet, which of course is varied all over the place, but um, just to be here experiencing that and sharing it with each other contributes to the evolving consciousness of the planet, of Gaia, of the one, of humanity. <clears throat> the way that we are connected through digital uh, devices and uh, almost instant communication um, is uh, completely new, as <laughs> almost anyone can see, but we certainly take it for granted rather quickly, and um, was not, uh, this is not replicated at any other time on the, on the physical plane. Yeah, we're all familiar with letters that would took uh, a week to get there, and uh, uh, ocean liner journeys that took a week or a month, a um, hundred years ago, shall we say, or even not quite that, 50 years ago. And the consciousness of other uh, beings, other nations, other uh, ethnicities, other religions, was always seen as the other because they were so distant and strange. <clears throat> so, um, I mean, even regional differences were emphasized within one country. And uh, to some degree, we've overcome that through uh, the, the state of the modern world in the last, oh, I don't know, 50 years. 
And um, so to be here experiencing that and sharing that is aiding in the evolving of the planetary consciousness. No question in my mind. So being here, being a witness and participating as consciously as one can is more than enough as far as I'm concerned. So uh, when I see uh, or feel more feel than see, you know, uh, you know, guilt radiating out from people who feel that they could be doing more. And as you explore your uh, psychic and uh, spiritual, you know, abilities, um, there's a tendency to feel that because you, you can do more and you, you are doing more and you feel like, oh, I should do more than that. I should do more than that. And uh, just because you've got the ability, you know. Um, I, so I would urge you not to subject yourself to that. Um, just enjoy the ride from day to day and, uh, you know, absorb the, the, the details of uh, the complexity of the ride into your consciousness. And um, that is more than enough. Just to go through the, uh, the cycle of uh, reincarnation, doing different things and being different people. I mean, that's, uh, that's a big deal in itself. So let us focus on that for a moment. Let me lead a, a small meditation anyway. Let us focus on what we contribute to Gaia, to humanity, to the, the, you know, the brotherhood of all sentient beings. Just by being here and interacting and uh, being one of the gang. Allow yourself to slide into that consciousness, that uh, focus level. Seeing all the sentient beings on the planet, maybe first of all just on the physical plane, going through their, uh, you call it their daily grind if you want, their um, activities, their duties, their self-preservation. See how the bustle, the energetic bustle of all that activity contributes to the overall vibration. Now follow the, uh, the beat of that thought 
into the, uh, the spirit realms. See the inhabitants of the spirit realms, the, the human dead for sure, as um, ex just extending those, the, those activities. Um, that's the lower realms, which are generally fairly unpleasant and filled with uh, negative um, emotions and uh, the uh, ugliness that that inspires. Then the, uh, you know, the uh, mid-level astral, we'll call them purgatories and heavens and uh, paradises where people uh, find their uh, comfort zone and uh, continue on as the uh, the uh, post-mortem version of the soul that they were on earth and uh, work on uh, all their uh, issues as they uh, mostly enjoy their uh, afterlives There's a minority that doesn't particularly enjoy it, that, you know, on the lower realms, that sort of put up with it, endure it, and uh, uh, hopefully, you know, when they've, they've run out of the tenacity of endurance, uh, move to a higher level. Um, and all, most of them do. It might take a while, but they do. Um, because that, uh, as I say, that sense of uh, bitter resentment and endurance of... Uh, yet another horrible life, it does have its own engine, its own energy, which, you know, runs out eventually. All energetic situations do tire of their uh, propulsive uh, energies. They just run out. Wars are the same. They just run out of energy. Uh, whether it takes, you know, one month, one year, or five years, they eventually run out of energy. And the solution may be seen in terms of geopolitical uh, posturing and, uh, uh, you know, uh, game playing. But there is an energetic uh, component where the energy for the conflict just dissipates until there's nothing left. And, you know, fresh energy sources have to be tapped into. But uh, that usually, uh, you know, comes later after some kind of uh, peace has been established. And also the souls in the upper realms who are barely there and sort of fairly transparent because <laughs> they, they've, you know, increased their vibration to the point where they can, they can sort of be seen, but not that well. And um, continue their activities just on a higher level. And uh, not close to being angels, but maybe not quite. And... Um, the uh, God level of consciousness that we explored before, the, uh, the beyond the heavens, the, uh, the one, the Elysian fields, the unmanifest, the area of energy from which all manifestation comes, that level, it has its own vibratory uh, level. It's very high and um, generally beyond most people's can. But if you focus on it, you will... Uh, come to some level of consciousness of it. You will see that all uh, activity and uh, creativity arises from desire and ambition, the desire and ambition that is implicit in the unmanifest. Because when we are nothing going nowhere, <laughs> as we are in that level, um, uh, you know, a drop of ocean in a, a sea of light, um, well, a drop of light in a sea of oceans. Um, we sense potential, and uh, although we're, uh, you know, experiencing it as a, as a very intense blissful, or almost beyond blissful, uh, you know, vibration, um, at some point we do seem to tire of that and wish to step out into you know, uh, the world of manifestation. 
where, you know, forms, objects, beings, you know, landscapes, uh, some, you know, appear. And uh, that's basically what happens. Things pop out of the man unmanifest because they're, uh, you know, uh, expressions of des desire to manifest various things. On certainly for just the pleasure and joy of doing it and on a secondary level to see what can be accomplished. So observe all that in your meditation and see how it um, contributes to the big picture and how you as a, a small cog in all of that contribute. Your seemingly meaningless daily uh, activities do actually make a contribution. They may be very similar to millions of other daily activities. And you, if you, if you think, oh well, if I subtract myself from that, I'm not going to be missed. Well, yes, in in that on that level, it, that is correct. But um, first of all, you can't really subtract yourself from the overall picture. Because subtracting yourself implies that you're going to go inactive or you're going to end it all. You know, one of those dramatic metaphors. Well, each of those choices just continues your vibratory contribution in another way. There's no way you can extinguish it. You can just sort of change its focus. We are always contributing to our own evolution and to the planet's evolution. And we have been since the, uh, the, the so-called dawn of conscious activity on the planet. tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. And, you know, it's important to recall that we are definitely contributing uh, when we're in our afterlives, if you wish to call that uh, part of the reincarnation cycle by that term. But I, I predict that the more you explore it through, uh, you know, consciousness projection and out-of-body travel and lucid dreaming, you will come to see that it is not that uh, distinct estate. That it's a continuation of the life you have here with the same uh, character components that you have chosen as tools to work on yourself for the manifestation of certain situations which you wish to use as educative uh, tools for your, your soul or educative situations and also for reruns of uh, karmically derived reruns of old situations that you wish to work on and, and you know do a better job at. Yes, it is merely a continuation of what it's like the second half of your life. The second half of your character's exploration of itself. In the context of many other characters to whom you relate. Are we evolving to some sort of omega point of, uh, of, uh, of consciousness? Um, that, that metaphor has been used. Um, I believe we are. Um, and uh, I remember I did find a quote in the Alice Bailey uh, channelings, which I put in one of my blogs mm, quite some time ago. 
can't recall it now, but um, I might dig it up between today and tomorrow, um, whereby we are at a certain point in our conscious evolution. Is it going to be several lives from now or in the in-between life state or, you know, but we will be able to uh, consciously survey as individuals, consciously survey the uh, complexities of all our journeys and, uh, uh, you know, uh, hold the culmination of all those journeys within our consciousness and observe it like a multifaceted diamond. And uh, uh, and see uh, how those multifaceted diamonds, which are, you know, the energetic uh, uh, result of uh, all our, you know, shall we say, strivings in all our lives, in all our various manifestations on the planet, have contributed to this, uh, this field of diamonds. And uh, I did uh, visit that field of diamonds earlier tonight, and it was in my consciousness when I woke up. And uh, there are, uh, you know, there's a, a great number of uh, strange but wonderful landscapes that you can explore that others have mentioned in their books and, uh, and uh, writings. Um, uh, landscapes that don't are not normal landscapes that are many many beautiful uh, no, sort of regular uh, uh, tree river mountain field you know uh, landscapes to be uh, to be experienced on the astral planes but these are more uh, abstractions with filled with uh, beautiful creative you know, shapes and experiences that one can move through. And um, there are many of them. And uh, this one that I was uh, visiting was this field of uh, diamonds. I'll call it a field because you could wander through it. And it was all these diamonds sort of standing on their points or, you know, and it was like being a, a, a tiny little fly inside a jeweler shop or something. And I sort of wandered dazed looking around all these uh, gorgeous uh, facets of, of diamonds, you know, standing on, on points. And um, like, you know, like, um, like sculptures um, to be ob observed and, uh, and uh, marveled at. And, you know, f reflecting light and sparkling, you know. And uh, as you looked at the, uh, the uh, sh shafts of light coming off the, uh, the angles, um, you could sort of sort of fall into them and they would become more than just a shaft of brilliant light, but they'd become like kaleidoscopes of uh, various uh, shades. And um, it was, you know, you could easily get lost in it, and I did for a certain amount of time. And uh, uh, at first was wondering what this was. And, you know, as one does with all these... Uh, marvelously weird astral landscapes and um, uh, I realized it was some sort of representation of the culmination of all our uh, incarnational activities as how, how completed beings might look in one version so it was a you know a vision of that, a vision of completion, and um, an aspect of it. I'm not saying that's the the only way it can be seen or experienced. It's one aspect of it. And um, as completed beings, we graduate to other activities, and some of those activities might be uh, guiding uh, souls that have not uh, reached that level. Um, but, uh, or moving on to other planetary systems or residing in some, uh, 
uh, nirvanic states, not really doing anything much at all. And, uh, but it was, uh, it was quite a wonderful experience. I mean, you know, the consciousness projection is filled with wonderful experiences and um, it's hard to uh, sort of describe them in a significant way that doesn't sound just like the previous description. But uh, there it was and I was there and marveling at it all and uh, bringing back the, uh, just by myself, I didn't see anyone else there. Now that doesn't mean no one else was there because it was a big place and I was wandering around <clears throat> and all the diamonds were, you know, diamond shaped. Um, not identical, but, you know, had all these facets and angles and, you know, uh, light reflecting off in, in, in different ways and uh, uh, being a dazzling, you know, uh, uh, exhibition of, uh, I don't know, gorgeous brilliance. I don't know what you want to call it. I don't know. And, um, but I think that was what I was given to communicate uh, to you. And, uh, you know, that follows the, the pattern that I've uh, experienced for many, many years on my own journey as I'm given certain experiences and certain qualities of experiences helped along by guides or my higher self or, you know, or, you know, uh, you know, high guides, guides that are, are concerned not just with, you know, you working out your problems, but, you know, the, the higher uh, uh, goals of, of humanity in Gaia. And um, you're given experiences so that you will share them with others one way or another. You're not given them for yourself. That experience of with the diamond field wasn't just for me, although, you know, I certainly benefited from it. It's for everyone, or as many people as I can communicate it to. And um, generally, that's what your inner journey is all about. Um, having your consciousness raised and then passing that new level as much as you can onto any others that are receptive to the experience. And of course, you know, this is where this uh, sort of preaching comes in. People feel that urge to pass along the experience, but they don't limit it to those that are open to the experience or open to new, new thoughts and ideas. They, they go around and sort of try to uh, bully those that aren't really interested into it. And, of course, the history of the planet is filled with that sort of a thing. Join our religion or die, you know. And um, that's a reflection of a fairly primitive soul evolution. And But many, many people were at that level. And, uh, uh, you know, I experienced it myself in previous lives. So, you know, I know what I'm talking about. Um, and, you know, new religions come along and wind up bullying the old religions or the members of the old religions and, you know, adapt or die sort of thing. And um, it's an unpleasant history, but it's what happens. And, you know, it's just one more, uh, you know, turn on the road uh, towards uh, realization of our inherent divinity, our, our diamond state of being perfectly carved beings that reflect light. The light of love and understanding. The light of beauty. The light of unconditional sharing. Notice I say sharing instead of love. Um, because I believe this unconditional state is more than what we understand by love. So as I prefer to use the word sharing from time to time. Unconditional sharing of, you know, everything. Not just what's, you know, publicly approved of, but, you know, everything. So, um, let us meditate on that, uh, on that diamond field of, of uh, completed beings uh, that go together, that join willingly join to create, you know, uh, a completed planet.
allow yourself to, as you contemplate this, to wander through that diamond field and experience it in your own way, above and beyond my rather paltry description of it. Allow yourself to go there. Allow yourself to be there. Allow yourself to see it and feel it and share it. Allow yourself to be there. Allow yourself to share it. Allow yourself to feel the striving and the struggle that have resulted in this. Now, I ask you to take that, uh, that experience, that uh, bliss, that uh, partial bliss, if you like. Take that into the rest of your day. Carry it with you and uh, see if you can uh, feel the, uh, the, the, the daily and minute strivings of others that you come into uh, or, or maybe even come into conflict with 
as contributing to that uh, bigger picture, as contributing to the evolution of consciousness and humanity, resulting eventually in that diamond field. And with that, my friends, my companions along the way, I wish you well, and uh, we'll talk again very soon.